Hello, this is the first book in the Saddle Tank book series and it's all about Alice the Little Welsh Engine. It's written and illustrated by me, Pauline Hazelwood. And it's dedicated to all people who love steam engines and to the memory of all those who worked in the slate quarries of Wales. It starts with the map showing where she worked and all the places she went to on her road to being fixed so that she could come back steaming again. High up on a mountain in North Wales, a little engine called Alice would spend all day chuffing around one of the largest slate quarries in the world. Over the years, men would climb up from the valley to quarry the slate. They loaded it into her wagons that she pulled to the incline and the slate would be sent down to the valley below for roofs and floors and tombstones. But slowly the men stopped coming up the mountain to work. Alice was left behind in her shed. Sometimes strangers would appear and take some of her parts for other engines. One day, even her wheels and underparts and boiler fittings were taken. The little engine stayed on the mountain with the wild goats, rabbits and birds. It was often dark, cold and windy. In the valley below, Alice hadn't been forgotten. People at the West Lancashire Light Railway were plotting to rescue her. That's her shed high in the mountain on Australia level at Denori Quarry. And you can still visit it. And there are lots of goats up there too. They decided to move her down from the mountain. After being hidden away for such a long time, the rusty little engine was carefully pulled out of her shed. It's a long way to go. Wow. She was so high up on the mountain that it took a very long time to lower her down to the valley, hundreds of feet below. When Alice finally reached the bottom, everyone gathered around happily. It was only the beginning. Now she was loaded onto a lorry and taken to a workshop in Preston in Lancashire, where they had to remove her boiler. Then she was loaded onto a lorry again and headed off to a new owner in Wales. Soon, Alice arrived at a little railway station near the Bala Lake. Other engines were there that had worked at the same quarry, and lots of her parts too, all now carefully brought together and owned with Alice by the Reverend Cliff. Alice looked very tired and tatty in the engine shed at the Bala Lake Railway, next to the other engines like Maid Marion, which had smart paintwork and shiny brasswork. Time slipped by while everyone thought about what to do. Then Mr Scott decides to buy her and fix her with help from his friends, Mr Black, an engineer, and Mrs Hyde, who set up a bookstall on the station platform at the railway to help pay for some of Alice's parts. Everyone began cleaning away the rust and grime. Then her springs and buckles and wheels and axle boxes were all repaired and refitted and oiled. Alice started to get new parts like nameplates, brakes, brackets and pistons, but she still needed a boiler with its 40 tubes inside and a new coat of paint. She could no longer stay at Bala. Mr Scott said that Alice could stay in a shed near his house until they could afford to finish her. Every day he would visit the little engine, but there was no room in the shed to fit the boiler.
Well, one day a tractor came to tow Alice. Her heavy wheels left marks in the road and she made a very loud noise as she was towed all the way through the village of Klanderfell to the old schoolhouse. But it wasn't really a school at all. It was a workshop and a boiler was there which had been specially made for her. The new boiler was soon fitted snugly into place under her saddle tank. Alice now had lots of valuable fittings, so Mr Scott sent her to Boston Lodge, the oldest railway workshop in Britain, where she would be safe. Finally, the last pieces were repaired. Her lubricator and lever were added, her brasswork was polished up and Alice was painted. The little engine was now ready to make a trip along the railway track. Her fire was lit to make the steam which would drive her wheels round and round and she chuffed away along the main line over the cob to Port Maddock. Soon after that she went on her longest journey all the way to Blynafistiniog. Now that Alice was fixed it was time for her to go to Leighton Buzzard Railway to work as they had paid for her boiler. When Alice arrived there were lots of other engines there already waiting in the engine shed and there was a steam gala. Lots of people had come to see the little Welsh quarry engine. The other engine drivers tooted their whistles. Mr Scott gave a speech. Mrs Hyde appeared and popped a bottle of champagne and poured it over Alice's nameplate. Everyone clapped and cheered. They were all there to welcome Alice, the little Welsh engine, to her new home. There's the map again. We can visit all those places. That's Pages Park at Leighton Bassett. And here's a little sketch of Alice with all her bits and pieces, information for you to understand the engine. And you can still go and visit her now at the Bala Lake Railway where they have special Alice Gala days. I hope to see you there soon. Take care. Bye.